June 8, 1967 was a clear, sunny day with unlimited visibility. It was such a nice day that as the USS Liberty floated in international waters 14 miles north of the Sinai Peninsula, sailors were sunbathing on the spy ship's deck. But all wasn't as tranquil as the sunny day would convey, for June 8th also marked the fourth day of the Six-Day War, which involved Israel, Egypt, Syria, and Jordan. Monitoring this situation was the USS Liberty, a World War II freighter that had been converted into a spy vessel by the NSA, the National Security Agency. In fact, the Liberty was the most sophisticated and identifiable intelligence ship in the world at the time, with dozens of large antennas, state-of-the-art electronic intercept equipment, moon-bound satellite dishes, massive aerials, plus a TRSS comm system that sent real-time messages to the Pentagon. The Liberty also also flew a large 5 by 8 foot American flag, was freshly painted with large white numbers and letters on its bow and hull, and contained no offensive weaponry except for four 50 caliber machine guns for defensive purposes. These details are important to keep in mind because at 8 o'clock a.m., as the Liberty floated in international waters at less than five knots with a five by eight foot American flag hurling in the wind. A squadron of Israeli jets circled the ship at least a dozen times. These reconnaissance planes flew at such low levels, as close as 200 feet, that the sailors aboard the Liberty actually waved to the Israeli pilots. And, as we will show later in this documentary, those commanding these Israeli jets not only ID'd this ship as being of American origin, they also positively ID'd it as being the USS Liberty. Despite being fully aware of its status, at 2 p.m. in the afternoon, three unmarked Israeli Mystere and Mirage 3 fighter jets pummeled the Liberty with rockets and cannon fire. These bombers initially went after the ship's antenna and electronics dishes, in the process filling the American flag full of holes. As sailors fled for cover, Liberty crewmen hoisted a new, even larger 7 by 13 foot flag into the air. But this new, even larger flag didn't stop the Israeli onslaught as they sprayed the Liberty with napalm, the highly incendiary substance burning the sailors' flesh. While this unprovoked act of war was taking place, radio operators aboard the Liberty tried to signal for help, but their SOS distress messages were not heard because the Israelis had deliberately jammed all five of the Liberty's emergency radio channels, a phenomenon that shows quite clearly that the interfering party was aware of their target beforehand and had previously zeroed in on it for to jam a stranger's radio in such a rapid manner is virtually impossible. Unable to get help, the USS Liberty, with eight sailors already dead and 100 wounded, including Commander William McGonagall, was a sitting duck for the Israelis who at 2.24 p.m. sent in three torpedo boats loaded with thousands of pounds of explosives. With their target already in flames, the Israelis bombed the Liberty with shells, quickly killing 25 more men. As firefighters and medical personnel tried to put out fires and save their ship and crew, they were repeatedly machine gunned by Israeli aircraft. By 3.15 p.m., after it was apparent that the Israelis didn't want to leave a single man alive, the crew abandoned ship. But as the surviving crewmen fled for their lives, Israeli warships at close range sprayed those rafts aboard the ship with gunfire, along with those carrying the wounded that had already been lowered into the water. It was a sickening display of brutality and savage inhumanity, a total lack of regard for human life. The Israelis wanted no survivors. When word eventually reached the White House, President Lyndon Baines Johnson assumed that it was the Egyptians attacking our ship, so he immediately dispatched air support, which would have reached the Liberty in 40 minutes. But then, when LBJ discovered that it was in fact the Israelis who were attacking our vessel, he immediately called off the rescue. In other words, Phantom Jets, already en route from the Sixth Fleet, were ordered to turn around and return to their point of origin. Try to let the seriousness of this situation sink in for a moment. Navy fighters launched from the aircraft carriers USS Saratoga and USS America were recalled by the White House. 
But the blame doesn't stop there. Defense Secretary Robert McNamara and National Security Advisor Walter Rostow at first ordered instantaneous retaliation, but upon discovering that the attack originated from Israel's Haifa base, McNamara called off the exercise. In fact, it was reported later that Robert McNamara was so irate when discovering that Liberty Radio men contacted the USS America that he barked, tell the 6th Fleet to get those aircraft back immediately Immediately. Due to this traitorous behavior, the USS Liberty had to wait 16 hours after the attack stopped before they were rescued by our military forces. It is the only instance in American naval history that a rescue mission was aborted while an American ship was under attack. In all, the Israeli attack on America's USS Liberty, a ship that sat almost motionless in the water with no offensive weaponry while sailors sunbathed on its deck, lasted for two full hours, equaling the length of Japan's infamous attack on Pearl Harbor. 821 holes were found in the ship, resulting from aircraft rockets, cannon fire, and torpedo blasts, while over 3,000 holes from Israel's machine gun fire were also counted. Far more tragically, the Israelis killed 34 Americans that fateful day, wounded 171 more, and instigated the worst U.S. naval losses since World War II. And even though U.S. Secretary of State Dean Rusk and Joint Chiefs of Staff Admiral Thomas Moore called this attack deliberate, to this day not one guilty party in Israel or the U.S. has been brought to justice. All the for you. thoughts that always come back to us time and time again is how this thing is still being covered up after 40 years. And we know without doubt from those circumstances that it was a deliberate attack. Uh, anyone who looks carefully at the details knows that it was deliberate. And that includes such people as Dean Rusk, Secretary of State, and all of the heads of all of the intelligence organizations. Will the